Welcome back. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service, your family and consumer science agent. We are working through our series on skin cancer awareness for the months of July and August. So we talked last time about the major three types of skin cancer. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the risk factors for those and then how to do a self-exam. Cause we just wanna reiterate the fact that anytime we talk about skin cancer, uh, any type of cancer, really, the sooner you can have it detected and the sooner you can get it treated, the more likelihood that you will completely recover from that. So we want to look a little bit about what to be aware of and what a self-exam might look like. Okay. And I'll just remind you, skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the United States. And we are taking this information from our extension health specialist, Ms. Sonia Kukel. This is from her extension guide. I-106, so you're getting snippets of that from me, but if you go to our nmsu.edu and extension publications, you can actually download a full copy of that guide, or as always, you can contact our extension office here in Curry County, and we would gladly provide you with the full copy of that document. You can also sign up to receive our bi-monthly newsletter that would include the majority of this information as well. So some people are at a higher risk for developing skin cancer than others. So understanding your personal history, completing your self exams can mean catching potentially dangerous cancers early and then being able to seek treatment. So the Center for Disease Control has identified the following risk factors. A lighter natural skin color. Uh, and that's the skin color before tanning or any other type of adjustment. If you have a lighter skin color, you can be at greater risk. A family history of skin cancer with a lot of our medical conditions, we talk about understanding and knowing your family history. A personal history of skin cancer, meaning if you've had it, there's that potential and should be a greater awareness to monitor what's going on. Exposure to the sun throughout work and play. If you're out in the sun a lot or have been throughout your lifetime, you do greatly increase your risk of developing some type of skin cancer. Uh, if you've got a, a history of sunburns, especially early in life when we were younger, I know some of us as teenagers used to just lay out and want to be tan and we'd end up burned and that was never good. So a history of those things can contribute to a more likelihood that you would have some type of skin cancer develop later in life. A history of indoor tanning. Uh, I just want to let you know, indoor tanning contains UV rays, just like outdoor tanning. So there are some factors to it that could be considered safer, but overall what the recommendation is for prevention related to skin cancer is to avoid some of those things. Now, if your skin burns easily, if it freckles, if it reddens easily uh, or becomes really painful in the sun, you're sensitive to that. And so that's things you need to be aware of as potential risk factors. Blue or green eyes, light colored eyes can help contribute to that risk factor. Um, blonde or red hair, again, we tend to as blondes have lighter skin color, have lighter eye color, all of those things work together to contribute to your risk factors. And um, if you have a certain type or large number of moles, even those common moles on your skin, there is the potential for those to evolve and morph into something else. So being aware of all of these items can help you know, hey, I need to be a little more vigilant related to looking for potential skin cancers. So understand what your risk factors are in helping identify and catch it early. Just as we've been taught the importance of self exams related to other types of cancer, specifically breast cancer and testicular cancer, checking your skin on a monthly basis will help you identify if anything's going on that we need to know about related to skin cancer. So you're going to check your skin, uh, become familiar with what's normal for you, for your skin. And then when you find something unusual, see your doctor right away and ask those questions because the earlier we catch it, the better the chance of a cure. So the best time to do your monthly exam is after a shower or bath. So figure out kind of when that works best for you. Think about having a bright light, a full length mirror, because you're going to need to see all of you. Remember, we've talked about that several of these types of skin cancer don't just appear 
on the parts we can see or what's exposed to the sun. A hand mirror for checking things, two chairs or stools, and then a hair, some type of a blow dryer so that you can check everywhere. Now I'm gonna share with you the steps, what's recommended and how you can potentially check this is going to be uncomfortable for some people because we don't like looking at ourselves. We don't take the time to stop and check and feel and see, hey, what's going on? Unless something becomes itchy or painful or causes a problem. So the idea here is that we're going to do some examinations that will help us identify those things before it becomes a problem. So we'll go through what some of those steps are, the things you should be checking and looking for. And as always, you're going to want to then follow up with your doctor. Have your doctor do the checks and the examinations that you need. So first off, you're gonna to need to examine your face, especially your nose, your lips, around your mouth, your ears, and that means the front and the back of your ears. So this is where those mirrors are gonna come in handy and you may need to use uh, both of them to kind of hold that behind your ear and get a good look and a clear view of what's going on. You're going to want to thoroughly inspect your scalp. So take that blow dryer and that mirror and you're going to need to expose some sections in there and get a good look. Or maybe you have a friend or a family member that can help you, hey, check this out on your scalp to make sure there's not anything going on there. And then check your hands carefully. I mean, your palms, between your fingers, even under your fingernails. Those are going to be things that we don't always think about or we don't always notice, but think about the exposure your hands get to everything that's out there and around. Continue up your wrists. Make sure you examine, again, the front and the back and your forearms uh, in the front and the back just to get an idea. Hey, what's going on here? Is there anything that I need to be worried about? And then standing in front of that full length mirror, begin at your elbows and scan all sides of your upper arms. Okay, and don't forget your underarms up in here. That's going to be important to see as well. So you're going to need the mirror to get all those angles and check all of that stuff out to see, again, if there's anything going on there that maybe needs to be checked a little further. And we've talked a lot about what those signs and symptoms looked like last time. So anything you see that's out of the ordinary or unusual, you're going to want to follow up with your doctor and get that looked at. So we're going to keep moving down our body and check in everything. So now we want to focus on our neck, our chest, our upper torso. Women, you should lift your breasts and look at the underside to make sure there's nothing going on there that you don't see on a regular basis that might need to be checked out. And then with your back to the full length mirror, you can use that hand mirror and inspect your back, the back of your neck, your shoulders, your upper back, any part of your back or upper arms that you couldn't see back in step four when we were checking all that stuff out. You want to try to get those mirrors and angle things around so that you can get a good look at anything that might not be exactly right. Okay. Um, and then still using both your mirrors, you can scan your lower back down across your buttocks and the backs of both of your legs, places that things can develop and show up. Because remember, when we talked specifically about SCC and melanoma, they don't necessarily just pop up where the skin exposure is. We can see those parts and pieces of ourselves usually, even if we have to look carefully at our backs, but making sure we're checking all of those parts and pieces. Okay. And then finally, and again, I said, this is going to be, we don't like looking at ourselves. We don't like having to check things, but if you sit down and you prop each leg on stools, or on the chairs that we brought in, you can use your mirror and examine your genitals just to make sure again, we don't even think about that being a place where skin cancer could develop, but it definitely is. So checking um, your the front and sides of both legs, your thighs to your shins, getting down to your ankles and the tops of your feet, again, between your toes, under those toenails, and then the soles of your feet. Look at the bottom of your feet and see what's going on there. Get that standard of what is normal for me? What does my skin look like? Where are there maybe some moles, some birthmarks, some things that they're there and that's okay versus things are changing and I need to get this checked out. Just a reminder, the information I'm providing for you within this series is intended as summary information. It's meant to be educational and promote awareness. So anything that you see or have a question about, you surely need to follow up with your medical provider 
uh, that this takes no does not take the place of any medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Again, I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service. We're running through our skin cancer awareness series. Next time, we're going to talk a little bit about sunscreens, what you need to know, what you should be doing. And so I hope you'll come back and get a little more information to help you prevent and be more aware of skin cancer. Thank you.